it's Miss Amanda with week six of Simply Loved. This week, we are going to learn all about Sarah and God's promise to her. So first, we're going to start out with an activity. Um, if you have, let's see, I'm sorry, wrong page. Um, you should get out your larger craft sticks. And for this one, I think I included one for each person. Um, I ran out of craft sticks and instead of running to the store, I just um, gave one per person. So anyway, I don't even have any left. So I'm going to use index cards with, if you wanna write more, just totally use the index cards in your kit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to write jokes. We're gonna write a joke on one side of your stick and then put like the the answer or the catchphrase or the punchline, there we go, on the other side. And then you'll put them in a pile and you guys can play with them and read your jokes and read the answers. They're funny. Uh, who is the funniest person that you know? Hmm. I have a couple of friends who are pretty darn funny. I also have one of my daughters is pretty funny and uh, yeah anyway I have been told that I'm not allowed to mention their names anymore from them <laughs> okay so today we're gonna hear about a whim a woman named Sarah who thought God was joking but he wasn't we can trust God trust God even when he works in mysterious ways.
Today we're discovering we can trust God. That's our Bible point. So every time you hear the words, we can trust God, point up and say, trust God. Let's try that together. The cat point. Trust God. God always keeps his promises and sometimes he comes through in surprising ways. I promise no matter what comes our way, we can trust God. Trust God. Let's sing a song about that. Let's visit with our Bible memory buddy. It's Ray, and she's a giant manta ray. How much do you know about manta rays? Let's find out with a this or that challenge. You'll hear two fun facts about giant manta rays. It's up to your decision which is true, this fact or that. The name manta comes from a Spanish word. Does manta mean blanket or float? Manta is a Spanish word for blanket. <laughs> hey friends, it's me. I'm Ray and I'm a giant manta ray. The name manta comes from a Spanish word that means blanket. Can you see why? Ah, this blanket glides through the day, enjoying God's great blue ocean. We giant manta rays like to hang out in shallow water during the day. Then we dive down into the deep end of the sea at night. What about you? Do you like the shallow end or the deep end of the pool? I'm one of the world's largest fish. And I tell the world's funniest fish jokes. Want to hear some? What fish are musical? Tuna fish. La, la, la. What do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. Get it? The letter I is missing. <laughs> One more. What fish is most valuable? A goldfish. It feels good to laugh, doesn't it? 
Trusting God puts a smile on your face. God always keeps His promises. Now that's something to brighten any day. In the Bible book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 4, it says, For the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything He does. In the Bible, a woman named Sarah had a good chuckle too. She was as old as a grandma, so she thought the idea of having a baby was pretty funny. But God's promise came true, and she had a baby boy. Sarah and her husband Abraham named the boy Isaac, which means laughter. It's fun to look back and see how God keeps his promises. Maybe you needed friends and God was with you. Or maybe you were scared and God comforted you. Or perhaps you asked God for help and he answered in a surprising way. We may not see or realize that God's working in our lives, but he is. So keep an eye out for God's promises to come true for you. You can because you're not a <laughs> We can trust God. Hi everyone, it's Miss Katie again. And um, today I want to share with you a little bit more about the Bible. The Bible is God's true story of love. And each book of the Bible is made up of chapters and verses. Chapters are longer and verses are usually about one sentence. Our Bible memory verse is Psalm 33, verse 4. Let's say the verse together. I'll say a line and then you repeat after me. Okay? For the word of the Lord, for the word of the Lord, holds true, holds true. and we can trust, and we can trust everything he does. We can trust God. Trust God. We trust that he loves us no matter what. Let's celebrate God's love with another song.
Can you tell me about a time that you laughed a lot? What was so funny? I know so many times when I have just laughed and laughed and laughed until the point where you almost cry or sometimes pee your pants because you're laughing so much. Well, those times, it wasn't even something that was that funny. It was just the situation and the people that I was with and just being silly and laughing and laughing and laughing and goodness. Doesn't laughing make you feel so much better? It does for me. Have you ever had to wait a really long time to get something that you wanted? Or go somewhere that you wanted? And it just seemed like it was going to take forever. And you just had to wait and wait and wait and wait. Well, God made a family wait a long time to get the answer that they were looking for but I promise God always makes those plans happen we can trust God trust God but it's hard to trust when we don't understand isn't it in today's Bible story we will hear about a man and a woman who didn't quite understand God's promise they will. So let's get to it. Let's get to this Bible story. I love hearing Bible stories because I feel like they're, in many ways, they seem very old fashioned and very, you know, a long, long time ago. But in other ways, they're very familiar. All right, here's the story. We met Abram in the book of Genesis in the Bible. His name used to be Abram. Oh, we met Abraham, I'm sorry, in the book of the Bible, uh, Genesis. His name used to be Abram, but God changed it when he made Abram a special promise. God said Abraham would have a big family and they'd play a special part in God's plan. It'd start with a baby It took a long time for that promise to come true. Day after day, year after year, Abraham and Sarah got older and older, waiting and waiting to have a baby. It may have seemed like God had forgotten. Then one day, something happened. That's where today's Bible story begins. Three important visitors showed up when Abraham wasn't ready. He had to, well, I'll show you. Imagine Abraham is sitting in the doorway to his tent. Suddenly, Abraham looks up and sees three very important visitors. Abraham leaps to his feet and runs and bows to them. Let's all take a bow like Abraham. Then Abraham invites them to have a meal with them. The visitors agree. So Abraham runs home and tells Sarah to bake bread. Abraham takes all the food to the visitors and they eat the feast. Let's pretend to chow down. Okay. One of the visitors says, I'll be back this time next year. And by then you and Sarah will have a son. Now, Sarah is in the other, another tent, eavesdropping. Do you know what that means? She's listening to what they were saying. She's got her hands behind her ears so she can hear better, just like that. <laughs> Let's listen with Sarah. So much time has gone by, and Sarah's way past the age where she can have kids. When she hears what the visitor says, she laughs to herself. <laughs> and right here, here's a picture of Sarah, and she's laughing because she does not believe. Oops, some of my papers fell. She does not believe that she is going to have a baby. Let our, 
Let's all laugh to ourselves. <laughs> now let's laugh out loud. Even louder. Nice laughing. Let's find out what Sarah said to herself as she chuckled. <laughs> Genesis chapter 18 verses 12 through 14. She laughed silently to herself. How could a worn out woman like me have a baby? She thought. And when my master, my husband, is also so old. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, Can an old woman like me have a baby? Is anything too hard for the Lord? About a year from now, just like I told you, I will return and Sarah will have a son. Nothing is too hard for God. That's why we can trust him. Trust God. Abraham and Sarah had been waiting and waiting, but it just didn't seem like the promise would come true. Maybe you know what that's like. Maybe you're waiting and trusting God right now for something to happen. Let's talk about what you could be waiting for. I know one thing we are all waiting for. We're all waiting for COVID. To go away, to be done, to move on, for everyone to be healthy, to not have to worry, to not have to wear masks anymore. Yep, that's definitely what I am waiting for and I know my kids too. No matter what we're waiting for, we can trust God. Trust God. What an important thing to think about right now. We really need to trust God that we are all going to make it through. Uh, well, back to the story. The visitors finish eating and go on their way. Bye! But a year later, guess what Sarah is doing? She is rocking a little baby boy in her arms. That's what, wow. Uh, let's all babble like babies. How'd that happen? Well, let's find out from Lexi. Genesis chapter 21 verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord did exactly what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and she gave a son to Abraham in his old age. It all happened at the time God had said it would. Sarah named her son Isaac, which means he laughed. What a cool name and a cool meaning. He laughs. No wonder Sarah trusted God. God kept his promise to her. We can trust God. Trust God. God always keeps his promises. Hello everyone. Today our reading comes from Genesis 17 verses 4 through 6. As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. Hi, we'll be reading Genesis seventeen fifteen through 16. God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. So names were a big deal in Bible times. They told who someone was, but they also hinted at what the person would become. Abram means the father is exalted. And Abraham means father of many nations. Sarah's name changed too, from Sarai, S-A-R-A-I, to Sarah. And Sarah means princess. God's promise changed their lives and their names too. Let's find out what our names mean. So in your kits for this um, section, I put in the bags a couple of print-offs of um, what your name 
means. Um, some of the spelling is not the same uh, because that was the closest thing that would come up. The meaning is the same. Um, it's just a variation of the spelling. Uh, there were a couple that I had a hard time finding. And so hopefully at this point, your mom or dad or someone can tell you um, what your name is all about and what it means to them. Um, although I'm not allowed to mention my children anymore. Their names all have special meaning to me um, and to my husband, Ken. We came up the, with them in a variety of ways. Um, a tradition passed down from generation to generation, family name. Uh, one, we got from a vacation uh, and we're inspired. And one was kind of by default and then a lot of emotion um, led us to that name. So anyway, so what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna grab one of your pieces of construction paper out of your kit any color, whatever color is your favorite. You're gonna grab some of your crayons, pencils, maybe stickers if you want. And you're gonna write your name really big in the middle. And then you're gonna put somewhere on there what your name means. So Amanda is my name, my first name. And my name means worthy of love, or I've also seen beloved, or beloved, beloved. Anyway, uh, so I put those on there and then you can draw pictures of all of your special meanings uh, or put words. Uh, and that's what I did. I put um, mom, wife, teacher, symbol for church, the cross, um, a couple of traits like caring, um, different things like that. So. Uh, make it and decorate it and I really 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 can't wait to see these so when you're done can you please take a picture and send them to me I would love to put them all together and kind of make a collage of everybody's names so all right anyway that's that project I'll give you some time to work on that but remember we can trust God trust God Bible Memory Buddy Friend Ray reminds us that we can trust God. You'll each receive a Ray sticker to help you remember to trust God throughout your week. You can wear it or keep it. God told Abraham and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah that they'd have a baby. Later in God's story, God promised his people that another baby would be born. This baby would be extra special because he'd save people from sin. Do you know who that baby was? It was Jesus. I'd like to read you something about our friend Jesus. As you listen, please lock your pinky fingers together like you're making a pinky promise between you and Jesus. Hmm, maybe like this? It's kind of hard to do. Um, and then close your eyes and listen to me read. We can trust God because God keeps his promises. 
If you've ever had someone not keep a pinky promise, you know the truth. Some promises aren't worth much. People mean to keep their promises, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. A promise is only as good as who makes it, and God's promises can be trusted. God has kept his promises no matter what. He's never fumbled or forgotten a promise. A long time ago, God promised to send a rescuer to save people from their sins. He kept that promise when he sent his only son and our friend Jesus. And here's good news. God has made promises to you. Jesus promised to love his friends, to give them peace and joy, and to never forget them. You can trust Jesus to keep his promises, every promise, every time. All right, now you guys can grab these flyers out of your kits. And if you'd like to learn a new paper airplane, it says it's a sofa. You can make a sofa this week. All right. I hope you enjoyed week six. I'll see you in week seven.